Hey, do you need wallpaper? Go to wallpaperboulevard.com. Give them my name, tell them Spencer Colgan sent you, and they'll be sure to give you 10% off at checkout. Check it out, tell them I said hello. They have a tremendous selection. Don't shop anywhere else until you've checked out www.wallpaperboulevard.com. This is Spencer Colgan, and welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we primarily do wallpaper, wall prep, and painting. Skim coating. A lot of people that hire me say, what is a skim coat? They know what plaster is, but they don't call it plastering. They know what spackle is. And few know that term too. But they know smooth walls. Hey, I need my walls made smooth. But I'm telling you, you can, you can put me out of business if you're the do-it-yourselfer and you follow what I'm about to show you. A lot of people are uh, perhaps a little dismayed by the price they have to spend on having their walls made smooth. But if they put a couple of weekends together and give it a go themselves, they will discover that... In some cases, they may do a better job than the people who come to get paid to do it. So I'm gonna show you some very basic techniques. If you can do what I'm about to do, which I know you can, you can do this yourself. You don't need to hire somebody. Let me show you what I'm talking about. This video will primarily concern itself with those issues that come up during skin coating, such as the marks that are inevitable when you're skim coating. I'll first start with this preliminary frame that talks about these lap marks. They're called lap marks because that's where the edge of the taping knife is. And then if you try to get rid of it, here's what happens again. You get rid of one and you create another. Well, this video was going to show you how to avoid that. So I'm working in this house and I just realized that the side of my truck says smooth walls. Okay, because that's one of the things we do. Now, I have smoothed this wall. And I'm on what I call the polished coat. That's the last coat. Because the second coat leaves some lines because of the lap marks made, because of the unevenness covering the texture, etc., etc. But when you get to the last coat, you're doing what's called a polish coat. Uh, I'll tell you what, a lot of people would just paint over this. And, um,. Even though you could, there's some, if you just rub your hand, you'll see, or you'll feel some uneasiness. So I want to show you, if you had walls that were not terribly textured, you might get away with doing one coat, which is what I'm going to show you here, of skim coat. And I'm going to show you how to do it without getting the lap marks, okay? That takes a little know-how. Let me show you what I mean. So, if you're just doing your bedroom or your bathroom, I suggest you use the roller method, okay? And that is the consistency of the, of the joint compound. All I'm using here is joint compound. I'm going right to the wall. Now, here's, here's an important trick. If you go too thin in this process, the mud will start drying on you, okay? Take note that I'm not going up to the ceiling. I'll show you what I mean. My knife will do that. Okay, let's go to the wall again. Please take note once again, it's not 
too thin. Because if you go thin, it'll start drying. This is how thick it is. See that? Another thing you want to have on hand is a water bottle. And if you just spritz down what you rolled, if even if you're going to take a minute, a minute is kind of like a long time when you're doing a skim coat, you can see the edges will start drying. They literally start drying within a, about a minute to two. Not much, but they will start to lose their moisture. The water buys you some time because what you're doing is making moist the top layer so that the water in the mud stays in the mud and that your water, instead of your mud, gives up the water and evaporates. Can you bring them in close? I just want them to see. I'm coming up against a newly wallpapered wall. And I'm just gonna come with as close as I can. But like the ceiling, I'm staying away from it. Okay, so I just covered four feet by four feet. I'm comfortable with that amount. I'm just going to lightly mist it, mist, and then I'm going to <clears throat> go right to my hawk and trowel. Recently, I introduced the level five finishing tools. Very good tools. If, if I had bigger walls, no interruptions with windows or furniture, I'd use the level five. So. If you bring them in close now, this is everything. If you just come in close. Okay. So, I'm using a 10 inch taping knife. I want to make sure that you scrape all of the, the rocks off of the top. I'm going right up to that top and I'm filling in the very top corner where wall meets ceiling okay so if you can zoom in they'll see that it's perfectly covered now but here's the thing if you leave it like what i just did you'll have to sand it i'm going to show you how you don't sand it take your knife and ride it up against the ceiling right to the corner hold down done Ride it against the ceiling, pull down, done. Again, right up against the ceiling. What you're forcing the blade to do is to take everything from the corner and pull it down smooth. This side I use for junk trash in the mud. Okay. Now, um, just clean up that corner. The corner's a little trashy. Okay, so cleaning it off. We got some rocks in there from doing the wallpaper, but now I'm a wallpaper guy, so I'm gonna gently put my blade up against the wallpaper, gently. Watch this, can you bring it in? Real gently, just try to get them to see this action. Nice and easy. You see the mud is nice and wet too. Okay, now we'll do the same thing against the wallpaper that we did to the ceiling. So if you can come in over here, they'll see it better, I think. 
<laughs> okay, now we'll ride against the wallpaper just for an inch and go that way. Keep cleaning it. Come right up against that corner, go in. Go right up against that corner, pull in. What you'll see is that you're forming a very nice clean corner. Pull in. And now you're doing it again. Oh, we're pulling rocks. So, all right, you see that rock? Did they see that line? Mm -hmm. We're gonna do it again. Get rid of the rock. And right, we're gonna go to a break in a moment. So far, so good. Now, hold on, I wanna tell them what, I, what we wanna do. Now we're ready to go quick. We've cleared three inches from the top, three inches from the side. Now watch this. Now, can you back up? They can't see all the shadow. If you back up behind the length, they will be able to see it. Okay, now, hold on a second now. We're gonna drag this down, drag it down. Okay, my mud started drying a little. It started getting hard, I felt resistance. I added mud on top of it. I'm gonna go up to the top part. Now, if you go thick, you'll be making dents in your plaster. We're just gonna go nice and smooth, right up to about an inch or two from the top. And you'll see that it doesn't cause the line that you're causing in your job. Because it's already begun to set up. And I'm just touching it lightly. I'm not pointing it in. Watch how I put the blade. I'm just bringing it just so slight. My pressure increases as I start to move down. I just need to make contact with it. And look, no lap marks. Now from above, you'll see that I rolled a new layer of mud just above where I finished off. So I finished off over here. I rolled my mud just a couple of inches above it. It's not going to mess it up. Okay? Look. Now the point of the video is how to avoid lap marks. And it, it's just something that you don't get if you do this right. So here's where you don't get lap marks. You see, do you see how the consistency is? Okay. You see how sharp the blade is? Now, the, remember the guy who does the cleaning of the windows with that squeegee? Why doesn't he get marks on the window where you see the, the lap marks from the edges? It's because of the way we move the blade. Okay, I'm gonna come in close. I'm okay if I get a little mud on the wallpaper or the adjacent wall. All right, just check this out. Keep your knife clean. Bring them in close, please. Look how your blade does the work. This isn't really what you're doing. It's what your blade is made to do, really. Look at this. Just show them what's going on here. I'm coming right up against the wallpaper. I'm doing the same down here, even though you can't see me. Any marks, I'm gonna get out by doing this, okay? I'm gonna go one more pass vertically. Okay. Okay. Now, something with um, skim coating. If you have a line on your wall that you need to either scrape off or fill in, would you go this way to fill it in or this way? If the line were this way, how best would you fill that in? This way or this way? If you said this way, you're absolutely wrong. 
the way to fill in either a vertical rib or a divot is to understand that you're putting compound inside of the rib or the divot or on either side of the rib, a rib is something that sticks out, to make the rib invisible. So we would do this rather than this way because we're filling it in and we're pulling the mud down so that it goes into the divot to hide it. If you go this way, you're going to accentuate the rib. Now, how to avoid impressions from this knife. Check this out. Now, can you come in closer? This is starting to set up for five minutes or so. Unless you hit it, nothing's going to happen to it if you touch it. Nothing happened to it. Listen. It, it's, it actually is hard already, like to the, to the gentle touch of this wide blade. Okay? So the trick is to start in an area that's not wet like this. Look. Look what happens if I start on wet. See that? So the whole trick is to, as you graduate from middle to lower, you simply roll over the mud that's setting up with new mud, and then you choose an area where it's already setting up, like right here. And then you increase your pressure. When I touch it, I'm not pressing hard. I'm starting a foot over where I need to be skimming. I start up here. I'm not pressing yet. Now I'm pressing. Watch it again. I start up here. I'm gradually increasing pressure. Now I'm bringing part all the way to the bottom. About an inch away from the bottom. But look at my lap mark. What's going on, Spencer? Guess what? Your blade will get rid of it. Let me show you how. We start on the, we press on the trim and go up. Press on the trim and go up. Then go sideways and go close to see if you made any marks. Gorgeous, Spencer. Nice job. Do it again. I press against the trim, go up. Press against the trim, go up. Oh, I'm going thick. Thicker the better. Press against the trim, go up. Now, clean off your blade. Now go in, cut that line where your wall meets the trim. Pull it in tight. Do it again. Pull it in tight. Do you notice there's no lap marks? It's about joining, setting compound to other compound areas that are already setting. If you're pulling mud, wet mud into wet mud, you're gonna have lap marks all over. Uh, look at this lap mark, can they see this? Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't need to wet it, I was going to wet it, but you don't need to. Don't let that dry. Take a clean knife, go above where it's setting. Now watch this, drag it against there. It's gone. Mm -hmm. If you wait too long, you'll drag it and the friction, the heat from this, will cook it. It'll literally heat it up and you'll see that it, it gets crinkly. Leave that alone, let it dry, fill it in again. Do it again. Start up where it's drying. Pull that tight. Now, how are we doing? That's amazing. Now watch this, hold on. Watch this. Ah. Let me show you this. Let's ruin the mud. Let's just ruin it a moment, all right? Not now, not here. Ugh. Okay, now watch this. Oh, Spencer, the kids hit my mud. Look what happened. Ah! 
That stinks. This is the only thing that's going to fix that. Mud that's this way. I don't want to wet it because wetting it, that's wet enough. Watch this. Fill it in. Nice and now I'm going to press hard. What I'm trying to show you is that you have a certain amount of time to work with joint compound while it's on the wall. It's something no professional wants you to know if you're inclined to do it yourself. They'll show you, yeah, you can do it. No, you need to know this, that you have a time limit and a moisture threshold to work with in order to do this like this. You have to be using wet mud and you have to be holding the blade at the correct angle. You will, I'm telling you, this is ready to paint. There are no lap marks, there are no divots, but don't forget, this is the third coat. So it's not like I can do this in one coat, no. This was a orange peel, semi-gloss painted wall, okay? And if you know anything about plastering or compounding over painted surfaces, you know that you get bubbles in the compound. And that is because that the air that wants to escape from this moisture can't go into the wall because it's blocked by plastic paint and so comes in the opposite direction outside toward the top layer of your compound causing bubbles and after you get to the second coat when you have an eighth of an inch of compound on the wall already those air pockets will go into the compound and settle there rather than come out here's the way to fix it prime your painted walls first and you won't get that okay the air disperses into the areas where it can come out of the moisture, out of the compound, and find itself a place to just disperse. Okay, so if you just go up close and show them that wall, why not? Please. Very nice. All right, let's do that up close. How, can we do that? Look at that. Look at that. Those are just lines. Those are, those are this is a flat wall. It's completely flat. It's flat. It's flat. It's perfect. Okay, so guys, you can do this. You can do it. You don't need me to come to your house. You really don't. So what do you need? You need joint compound. You need a hawk. And you need an applicator. For those of you who have small hands, maybe an 8-inch knife is the best. I have a 10-inch here. The wider you use the more muscle you're gonna to need to make it flatten out. Wet compound, that's the trick. And lastly, roll it on and use a water bottle, folks. That's it, that's it. I'm hoping that you learned something. If you like the video, please click on like. Subscribe to my channel, that's how you skim coat. And I don't care how bumpy your surface is, this is how you do it.